what we call, often call, CNS fatigue, or even adrenal fatigue, doesn't exist. I mean, you cannot fatigue the, the brain. The brain doesn't get tired. Uh, you cannot, adrenal fatigue cannot deplete the adrenal gland, okay? Uh, that's not a real thing. But the symptoms are real. It just does not refer to central nervous system fatigue or adrenal fatigue, but it, it has to do with the nervous system. What we call CNS fatigue, these are symptoms of CNS fatigue. Lack of motivation or lack of drive. Anhedonia, which is lack of pleasure. Negative mindset, low energy, low drive. Drop in sex drive. Moodiness, drop in physical and mental performance or drop in the desire to perform at all, or the desire to compete. These are often the signs, the symptoms we associate with CNS fatigue. Uh, oftentimes I will do a very, very rough training, very intense, and the next day you almost feel like you're drunk. Like headache, you no know, motivation, tired, uh, lack of motivation just to live your day. It's not CNS fatigue. It has to do with either dopamine or adrenaline. And more often than not, it's it's the receptor or the amount of dopamine. So if you deeply dopamine because you produce too much adrenaline, it's very likely that you might have those symptoms. It could also be the, the adrenergic receptors. If your adrenaline stays high too much, it stays connected to the adrenergic receptor for too long. Now, adrenaline is like the NOS in your car. It's not meant to be used as the main fuel for your car. It's for a short-term boost. Same thing for adrenaline. It's meant to fight or the tiger or run away from the tiger, not to function for 24 hours. So if your adren adrenaline stays connected to the adre adrenergic receptors for too long, the receptors don't like that. They are not meant to be turned on for that long. So they adapt by down-regulating. They stop responding forcefully to adrenaline, and then your adrenaline, your adrenaline receptors, adrenergic receptors don't get activated easily, and you're gonna have those same symptoms. But when it comes to dopamine, if you deplete dopamine from what we saw in the earlier uh, slide, then you can have those symptoms, and fixing dopamine is the answer. How can you know if dopamine is the problem? Well, in the morning, on an empty stomach, take 10 grams of tyrosine. If there's a dr drastic improvement in mood and energy after taking the tyrosine, then you probably have depleted dopamine store because the 10 grams of tyrosine rapidly gave you a dopamine increase. And that made me feel, feel great. Personal experience. One day, I, I took 10 grams of tyrosine by accident. I wanted to take two grams because I normally take two grams before training. I, take, I took 10 grams because I didn't want to measure anything. I'm stupid sometimes. And I swear to God, it was 6 a.m. And before 7, I cleaned up the whole basement. I shuffled the snow backyard and in front and actually enjoyed myself. And people who know me know I don't like shuffling snow at all. And I was shuffling the snow. I said, dude, am I enjoying this? Is there something wrong with me? It makes get a greater pleasure response. So I was dopamine depleted. In my case, I'm also, my dopamine receptors are resistant. So that's even worse. Now, if you have a drastic improvement, then it's the dopamine that's your problem. If you have a small but no noticeable improvement, you feel a bit better, more energetic, but I wouldn't say that I feel like a million bucks. The problem is likely more the adrenergic system because if you increase dopamine by taking tyrosine, you still increase the raw material that produce adrenaline, but it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So if there's a slight improvement, it's likely the adrenergic receptors that are somewhat resistant, or you're not producing adrenaline efficiently. And if there's no improvement, or even worse, if the things get worse, then it's likely a resistance of the dopaminergic receptors. And the only real reason why that can happen is if you're taking drugs, if you're abusing stimulants, especially in a more hardcore version of stimulants, like amphetamines, like cocaine, stuff like that. Uh, if you take steroids, stuff like that. It, or if you are smoking a lot, uh, unless you're doing that, then it's not likely that you're gonna have a dopaminergic resistance, but it can happen if you abuse these things.